Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. The RTX 40 series of graphics cards is getting ever closer. Most likely, we're going to start to see these cards launch in September, October time, with some of the SKUs, such as the 4070, coming out a little later, maybe a month or two. And speaking of the RTX 4070, we have some updated specifications for the 4070, which is easily one of the most anticipated cards, along with updates to the 4090 and the 4080. Let's start with the 4070, though, because the 70 series has always been a favorite with gamers. It will be utilizing the AD104275 GPU core and features 7,168 CUDA cores. Now, we haven't actually known the number of CUDA cores previously, but this is around a 20% increase, assuming, well, all of the architecture acts pretty much the same as what we've seen previously anyway, to the 3070. The intriguing thing, though, comes down to the memory configuration. So, Company 7 Kimmy, who actually leaked these specifications, had previously pointed to the 4070 utilizing 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, which also means 192-bit bus, but this seems to have been cut to just 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and 160-bit bus. So this means, in terms of VRAM anyway, the 4070 is now at the same capacity as the 3080. It is quite difficult, though, to know how this translates to performance, because obviously Lovelace has a significantly changed, let's say, cache structure, and we don't fully know how all of that's going to play out yet. Intriguingly, it's still going to be quite power hungry, around 300 watts of power consumption, which is, well, again, not exactly sipping on the juice. But it should be absolutely fine, of course, for most desktops and a reasonable PSU. Things start to get a little hungrier, though, with the RTX 4080, which has a power consumption, or a TDP, should I say, of 420 watts. Now, this is utilizing the AD103 300 core and features 10,240 CUDA cores. At 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, that's much more like it, I'm sure you'll agree, and of course a 256-bit bus. Just like the 4070, the memory is 18 uh, GBPS. So the RTX 4090 has also seen a small upgrade to the specifications. I think we've covered these previously, but basically the earlier rumored specifications were 16,128 eight CUDA cores, but now it's been significantly, okay, I'm joking, it's been slightly upgraded to 16,384, but hey, everything helps, right? Of course, we say that without the context, you know, in the clock frequencies, but anyway, 24 gigabytes of memory, and this is using GDDR6X memory, of course, a 384-bit bus, and 21 GBPS, so 450 watts is the TDP currently, but again, there is a possibility it could go higher. There is the 1490 Ti, or whatever it ends up being called, which allegedly could be like 600 watts plus for an even you know crazier configuration. I'm going to be very interested, to be honest, to see what the prices of all of these SKUs are. Now, again, one of my sources, this is not new information. Basically, this source is just backing up what several others have said. Uh, as well as the industry at large. But basically, the RTX 40 series seems to have been delayed basically because of oversupply of the RTX 30 series. Um, again, that's not really a surprise. It's not like I'm telling you something that perhaps you wouldn't have figured out yourself, but it does seem to be the case. I've now had several sources, a couple of whom are uh, have ties with AIBs, and basically, this seems to be what's happening. And uh, obviously, NVIDIA are very cognizant of that, and it's going to be very interesting to see what the marketing behind all of this is. Um, I think the clock frequencies of RTX 40 are going to be actually a little higher, perhaps, than many predicted. There were some estimates of around 2.4 gigahertz, but I'm hearing it could be higher than this, but I haven't heard specific numbers. I've actually said previously that I think it could be like 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz. I've had a few people whisper that it could actually be higher than that, but nothing specific at the moment. So yeah, I'm going to be very interested to see how the RTX 4070 in particular performs and also the pricing. Obviously, at the end of the day, this is in isolation. We don't know what AMD are going to be doing for their launch prices and all of that stuff as well. I suspect it's going to be a battle which is just absolutely fiercely fought. Um, and just 
yesterday, uh, as of the time I'm recording this, I was putting out a previous video discussing the potential for an RDNA free refresh, which could come out next year. And even NVIDIA might be launching a refresh of the RTX 40. It's going to be an interesting one. So now I want to shift our focus onto Intel's Raptor Lake because there are a couple of very intriguing pieces of news. The first of which isn't, again, that interesting because we already kind of knew this anyway. But uh, ASRock's next generation Z790 boards as well as the H770s have actually had some of their lineup leaked courtesy to videocards.com. I'll of course leave a link in the video description along with CopyD7 uh, Kimmer's Twitter account. Um, but basically, this essentially confirms that they do have DDR4 boards in the lineup. Again, this is not surprising. We've been talking about on the channel, and many others have been talking about it for quite some time. It's going to be good if you already have decent DDR4 memory, and you kind of want to side grade or have a small upgrade to, like, Raptor Lake. But given the fact DDR5 prices are starting to go down, perhaps not as fast as what many of us would hope, but they are going down, by the time things launch, it may not be such a big deal. It's going to be very interesting, to be honest, to see what all the prices are like over the next couple of months, certainly going into next year. But now, shifting our focus to Intel's Raptor Lake processors themselves, because there are some rumors that we could see at least one SKU hit 6 gigahertz. Further to this, there are a bunch of other rumors that are circulating including the fact that xtu includes efficient efficient excuse me thermal velocity boost mode i want to give credit by the way to wccf tech they've done a pretty good write-up for this so i'm going to leave a link in the description to that article along with one raichu um, who was the first to actually mention about this stuff for the clock frequency so raichu Back in the end of May, May 31st to be precise, said a new frequency era will be coming. Then they added, and this is just recently, a couple of days ago, June 21, as of the time I'm recording this a couple of days ago, 6 GHz turbo may appear in one SKU in ETVB mode. I guess it should not be a normal SKU, end quote. So to be clear, this is probably not going to be something that the processors just hit, you know, on a regular. I'm also assuming it's not going to be like all core or anything like that. Obviously, this is most likely going to be a marketing decision for Intel to really push this and say, hey, look what our processors can, you know, can can do. And don't forget, you know, getting slightly off the rumors um, that, well, AMD are really cranking the clock frequencies up. Um, they've already shown, a, you know, in public, a demo of a 16-core processor hit 5.5 gigahertz. Now, it was in a lightly threaded, quote-unquote, workload. It was basically a video game, which doesn't exactly peg all of the cores and threads, but it's certainly not analogous to, like, a light single-thread workload either. It's not like it's just you know, kind of idling on the desktop and it hits that clock frequency. So it is showing you that in real world workloads, AMD can certainly hit higher clock frequencies and AMD themselves since then have basically confirmed that they've been sandbagging and it can go faster. I've personally been hearing a lot of rumors now from many of my sources that it can hit 5.8 gigahertz or higher. Um, I've actually heard a possibility of like six gigahertz, but that does seem to be, let's just say, wishy-washy i wouldn't i wouldn't count on that yet and obviously we're not dealing with final quality silicon which makes it well a little bit trickier the bottom line is though with intel's um etv b mode or efficient thermal velocity boost basically it's a brand new feature and it essentially operates like precision boost overdrive 2 from AMD, and I'm sure many of you know how that works. So it's going to be interesting, to be honest, to see how the marketing of all of these processes ends up. I mean, uh, it's like I've said many times, I think that AMD are going to probably, you know, draw a lot of blood with it, uh, against Intel with their regular Zen 4s. But, you know, when it comes to the Zen 4Ds, I don't think Intel are going to be able to, I'm going to be able to keep up. But I'm also expecting AMD to kind of well, let's just say uh, charge appropriately. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.